So let's make a simple cantilevered beam using SolidWorks, and we'll apply a load to one end of the beam. Let's start by sketching on the right plane. I right-clicked, I'm going to go Sketch, and I'll click, let's do a center rectangle, and I'll draw it out. And then let's say the beam is, I don't know, half an inch, so I went to Smart Dimension, I'll click this length, draw up, and I'll enter one inch for that width, and I'll click this length, and I'll enter one inch for that width. And this will form the cross-section of the beam. So it's a one inch by one inch beam. And note in the lower left, what we'll do is we'll take this cross-section and extrude it out towards us. So we, in the X direction, we'll make it come out at us. So we go to Features, and then Extruded Boss, slash Base. And then let's do Direction 1. We'll do it blind. We'll come out, blind means we're going to draw it out uh, outward from the, uh, the YZ axis. I can grab this handle here and stretch it out, so I'll make a long one. Let's make the beam, I don't know, three, uh, let's do two feet long, maybe. So type in two feet here, click OK on that one. And I'm going to push the letter F to fit it. I'm going to push the hotkey Control 1 to look at that angle, Control 2 to look at the other side, control 3 to look at the end of the beam, and control 7 will come back to an isometric. I'll also press space and that allows me to look at the beam at different directions. For example, I can click there, I can click up here, and I push space again and I can look at the, the front the bottom angle. I can also hold the mouse wheel down and just pan around or zoom around like that. And look at the axis over here. So I'll hit control 1 again to bring it back to the standard mode. I can hold the shift key down and push the left arrow, push the right arrow and rotate it back. Here's the up arrow and the down arrow. If I want to, I can hold the Alt key down. And now when I push the left and right arrows, I can rotate it about the axis that's sticking out of the screen. And I'm going to hit Control 7 again to bring me back into the isometric view. We need to tell SolidWorks what our material is made of. So over here at Material, I'm going to click that, or I'll right click and say Edit Material. And here, let's make it an alloy steel. And apply, we can see all the material properties and such, but apply that and it changes the, the beam from, uh, well, it just adds the material alloy steel to our beam. Note that I've already got this simulation tab up here. If you don't have it, uh, if you don't see it, go to Tools, Add-ins at the bottom, and you could see all the different packages here. You want this SolidWorks simulation selected on the left. For this class, I'd also select it on the right, so it always appears uh, during startup. So make sure that those are there. And uh, once it's there, we'll go to Simulation. And under Study Advisor, I'm going to click this little down arrow. And we'll say New Study. And we want a static study. Nothing's moving. So I'll click OK for the static study. And let, we'll cantilever the back, or we'll fix the back side of the beam, and we'll apply a downward force to the front of it. So let's apply the downward force. I'm going to right-click External Loads, a force. This window will appear, and I'm going to select this face for the force. And note, when I zoom in on it, I'm just scrolling up with the mouse wheel, it shows a force acting in the negative x direction. That's not the direction we want it. Let's make the force acting downward. So I'm going to say, instead of normal to that face, I'm going to say Selected Direction. And this will give me a reference to select the direction. I'm going to select a vertical side of it. And that says that will make the arrows act parallel to the side that I selected. If I wanted to, I could select the top of it. It would make it go left and right. But let's make them go up and down. It's pointing upward, which is not what we want. We want them to point downward. So over here under force, let's not do it in Newtons. Let's apply a or we don't want it in Newton, so let's go from SI units to English Newtons, so pound force. We'll reverse the direction that makes them point downward, and let's apply a one pound force at the end of this. So I'll click OK on that. So now I've applied the, the force to the end of it. I'll push the letter F to fit it. And now with my mouse wheel, I'm going to rotate back, and we're going to fix this back piece, or fix this back face. So under Fixtures, I'm going to right click and go Fix Geometry. In this fixed geometry here, I'll click this, and let's fix this face by clicking it. There's a few things worth noting when I zoom in on this. There are arrows acting in all three directions, so, so what I can do with this face selected, I'm going to hit Control 8, and that'll make it normal to the face that I've selected. We could look at it, the face is constrained to move in the upward and downward direction, so it can't move up and down by this arrow. It can, also, it can neither move uh, left or right. I'll push uh, Shift left on the left side of it, and from this angle you can tell these arrows here prevent it from translating in the X direction. Another thing to worth uh, looking at are the little thumbtack tops, and that means that the material can't rotate. It's not allowed to rotate in, in any direction, so this truly is a cantilevered beam. 
If I want to, I'll right click here and say clear selections to remove it. If I want to, let's collapse that and then go to advanced geometry. We'll use reference geometry here to make a, a fancier uh, fixture that we have a little bit more control over. So again, let's select this face. And then if I want to prevent translation in one direction, I'm going to click that face. And what this says is that the beam is not allowed to move at all in the y direction. It's not allowed to move there. And if I want to, let's clear this selection. And now with that face, with this face selected, I can also prevent translation in three different directions. So to do that, I've got these three active, which would prevent uh, translation in the three different directions. Here I'm going to select this again, and I'm going to prevent translation with respect to face one in all three of those directions. So this would prevent it from moving in the x, y, or z direction, but note that there's no thumbtacks there. So in theory, the thing could rotate about each of those, which isn't exactly what we want for this problem, but keep it in mind for future problems. For this problem, all we really want is, let's just use a standard geometry. We'll just do a full fix on this thing, it's just a simple cantilever. So click OK there. We've got our fixtures. I'm going to hit F to go to full, Control 7 to go back to the isometric view. And I haven't saved it yet, which is a bad thing. So let's do that now. Click Save. Always save it before we run the FAA. And we'll just call it, I don't know, we'll call it cantilever. Click OK on that. Everything should be set up. We've fixed it here. We're applying a force here. I've applied the material. So once you're all set up like that, we need to apply a mesh. So right click here and go Create Mesh. And the mesh, when I say Create it, will go like that. And what this did was describe a series of points along or throughout the volume of the, the beam. So it will make calculations at each one of these uh, what are called nodes or each one of these intersections of the line. So at every node it'll make a calculation. If I want to I'll right click again on the mesh and go create mesh and here if I want it'll take a little bit longer to process but it'll be some more it'll be more accurate. So I'll click OK and I've made it a fine mesh. And you know now when you make the mesh it's a quite a bit finer so we get a lot more resolution on our simulation. So again, push the letter F to zoom it all out. Now that I've made the mesh, we'll run this thing. And that'll take a little bit of time. It took me uh, several seconds to run the simulation. So what we're showing here is what's known as a von Mises stress. We don't really, we don't want that in this instance. So right click here for the stress and we'll go edit definition. And instead of the von Mises stress, let's do the normal stress in the x direction. So I'll click there. And then uh, we'll report it. Let's report it uh, in Pascal, Newtons per square meter, if you'd like. And then we'll go the deformed shape. This will tell us uh, how exaggerated the deformed shape is. So let's leave it exaggerated so that you can see what it is. And I'll click OK on that. And now this shows us, uh, this is known as sigma x. I'm going to hit control 1 to look at it from the side. We can see that this material, this beam is bent downward. It's fixed on the left side and it's bent downward due to the force here. But this is a much larger deformation than you'd actually see in reality. So go come back to here, right click, go edit definition. And let's do the deformed shape. We'll go true scale on the deformed shape. Click OK with that. And you'll note this is a, an alloy steel beam that only one pound is being applied to the end of it. And it's one inch by one inch. So there's very little deformation at the end of this. Another thing that's really difficult to interpret is this color scale. These rainbows are really difficult for people to interpret. So to change that, right click here. We'll go back to uh, chart options. And on the, under chart options, we'll say under color options at the bottom, let's say, let's only make, uh, let's say, three colors. And we'll make it a user-defined color scale. So there's only three, uh, three uh, parts in the legend. We'll say three colors here. And let's say for a negative value, a negative value, we'll call it blue. And, and remember, a negative normal stress means it's under compression. Let's say a middle value, we'll call it white. And then the upper value, red, positive, means it's under tension. So click it like that, and then we'll click OK. Another thing to be mindful of is that there's four values on the scale to the right. Let's come back, go Edit Definition again, or I'm sorry, uh, Chart Options up here. And we'll go Defined Value, and what I'm going to do is we're going to set the upper limit and the, negative, and the lower limit to the same value, but positive and negative. The upper end is about 1.6 million, so let's just round it off to 1.6 million. The negative, the lower part, is negative 1.6 million. And my goal in making this chart is to have the white be a, a, a region of zero normal stress. And that's not the case here, so we need to play around with, under color options, we need to increase this to four. 
And with this set to 4 in the lower end, negative 1.6 million. This is under compression up top, 1.6 million under tension. And right at the middle, there's uh, no stress at all. And when I zoom in on the beam, it's a little bit hard to tell with this color scheme. But when I zoom in on the beam, I'll click OK out here. And then with this color scheme up here, let's just do a plain white color scheme. And now it becomes more and more obvious that right down the center of it, there's no normal stress. The very top of it, the beam is under tension. And at the very bottom of it, the beam is under compression. So I'll hit F again to fit it, Control 7 to go to an isometric view. And if you want to, we can click over here. There's a button. This button here is lights. So we can change around the, the different lights. Maybe it's sometimes easier to get rid of the directional lights. So we can, I'm going to type the delete key to get rid of that one. I'm going to type the delete key to get rid of this one as well. And now my ambient light, I'll right click and go edit light. And let's pump up the ambient light a little bit. It makes it a little bit easier to see if we want to uh, pump up the ambient light. It makes it a little bit less gray. When I hit control one, we can zoom in on this. See clearly again, see it's under tension at the top. Zero normal stress here, and then the material is under compression at the bottom. So we'll go back under results. I can double click here to show the stress profile again. Again, if I want to, I'll right click, go chart options. And let's get rid of this. We don't really need it. So we'll uncheck show plot details and I've got the legend over here click OK let's move the legend closer to our part and now we're in a situation if you want to turn this in or submit it as a report uh, we'll do a screen clipping and on a PC it's the Windows key I'm going to press Windows S it goes into this mode so I can take a screen clipping and I'll just grab this and now I've copied it to the clipboard and now with that on the clipboard we can go into Microsoft Word and I'll hit Control V to paste it. Now I've got a way to turn this in uh, and uh, I could type a little something about my, my figure. So homework one, uh, problem eight. And if I want to, maybe we want to turn in a side view of this as well. Let's get this legend. We'll move this legend over here. I'm going to use the Windows S key again to take a, a screen clipping. Oops, I cut, I cut off part of my legend. So I'll just leave the mouse here, hit Windows S again and now track back in this direction to get it onto the clipboard. Switch over to Word and uh, we'll paste it in below it just to show it from the side view as well. So that's a quick way to run, uh, to move it into an assignment.